spin-offs, side stories, whatever you wish to call them, when franchises get big enough these things often happen. I've already covered one Castlevania spin-off previously and now we're going to go all the way back to 1990. Kid Dracula is not only a cute little reimagining of the series, it's also a great game to boot. After waking up from a long sleep, Kid Dracula is informed that the Demon King Gallimoth has challenged him for the title of Demon King. Busting out of his coffin and grabbing his father's cape, you set off across nine levels battling SD versions of monsters and bosses, all while platforming through multiple locations and settings. Controlling Kid Dracula is just as easy as other games, but thankfully there's been a few handy changes made to this one. You jump and shoot much like a Mega Man game, and unlike the original Belmonts, you can control yourself in the air, making platforming a lot easier. As you complete levels, you unlock new attacks that you'll need to utilise throughout to progress further. These range from homing attacks and bombs, great for hitting airborne enemies and tougher foes, to transforming into a bat and turning gravity upside down so you can get through stage obstacles or cheese certain areas. I found the homing shot to be the most useful for the majority of the game, but there are areas and bosses that other attacks definitely shine more. Speaking of enemies, the whole game is littered with chibi versions of Castlevania monsters and some really bizarre additions. Skeletons, zombies, bats, all the regular series staples are here. Then there's a wealth of other random enemies. Figure skaters, snowmen, UFOs, King Kong, street punks, cacti, robots. There's a ton of random things here trying to hurt you. And that's not even including the bosses which range from ghosts, a giant chicken, Tutankhamun, a massive robot drill head, and of course Gallimoth. Quite possibly though, the weirdest boss is actually against Lady Liberty herself, who hates violence and instead challenges you to a quiz. You have to buzz in with your answer, and I was too eager while recording this and had to make a wild guess, which thankfully I got 100% right. None of them are too hard, along with the actual levels themselves, though the final boss rush can be a bit challenging without the checkpoints that most other levels have, and also trying to dodge certain enemy attacks. Much like the Lady Liberty quiz as a boss fight, there are also mini games strewn between each stage. They're a great way to stock up on lost lives, though some are better than others. Rather than selecting the one that you want to play, you have to decide by choosing a path. Once you've chosen a path to the one you think you're going to play, that choice changes due to the game adding random lines, making your original choice completely pointless. There are four games to choose from. There's a roulette table where you place bets, and a lottery where different coloured balls give different amount of lives. These two are the best for trying to win lives back. The other two, Can Can and One Shot, are a bit less forgiving. Can Can has you guessing the colour of the underwear of the dancers, while One Shot has you play a pop-up pirate game, hoping you last long enough without choosing the wrong hole and ejecting the skeleton's head. And to play all of these you need coins, which are acquired by killing enemies with a charged magic in a stage. Earlier stages you can rack up a ton of coins, so it's best to try and get as many as you can early on, because the later stages you can easily lose a bunch of lives quickly. Graphically, the game looks pretty simple, but is very colourful, with there being more details in the background in some stages than others. Levels range from a rearranged Dracula's castle, the desert, the obligatory snow level with annoying ice sliding physics, a city with a train ride auto scroller, and more. Some are much shorter than the others, but they all are relatively easy, apart from the odd stage hazard or enemy placement. The music and sound effects are also great, though not anything outstanding, but there are some good things to listen to while playing. Having known about this game for years, I finally managed to play it thanks to the Castlevania Anniversary Collection and I'm glad I did. Whilst it is a relatively short game, it's a ton of fun to play through. The humour and visuals are charming, while the actual game is tight and responsive. Since release, Kid Dracula has been featured and cameoed in multiple games, so I'm really looking forward to playing some of those. If you haven't tried this one before, then I'd highly suggest it, and probably the best way of playing it at the moment is through the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, which not only has this game, but a bunch of great other titles in it as well. And that's it from me, I've been Tom from Vitch Bros Gaming, thanks for watching and have a great gaming day.